welcome friends to this uh, new lecture of soil science and technology and uh, the topic of this lecture uh, is a qualitative description of soil wetness and uh, in the previous lecture we talked about different types of flow which occurs within the soil uh, we talked about saturated flow when we talked about unsaturated flow and vapor movement in the saturated flow we discuss about uh, Darcy's law and how it affects the water movement from one part of the soil to another part of the soil and what, uh, what is uh, hydraulic uh, we know hydraulic conductivity and how we measure hydraulic uh, we know how hydraulic conductivity affects uh, the movement of water and what are the different types of factors which are responsible for uh, changing the hydraulic conductivity or the movement of water. Then we talked about unsaturated flow. Remember that in case of unsaturated flow it is mostly occurred through micropores because uh, macropores are drained out uh, during this time and uh, uh, then we talked about the water vapor movement from one part of the soil to another part of the soil uh, due to different types of uh, gradients. So, today we will start a new topic that is qualitative description of uh, soil wetness. So, let us start. So, uh, think of when you are have a totally you know saturated soil and you want, want to dry that soil uh, with the application of different uh, you know metric potential or suction. And as a result of that, it will undergo a series of gradual changes in physical behavior and in relationship uh, with the plant. Because if you dry the initial water saturated soil, you will see that it will undergo a series of gradual changes. And uh, you know these gradual changes uh, we will discuss. And water remaining in the drying soil is found in small pores and in thinner films or in smaller pore corners where the water potential is lowered principally uh, by the action of metric, metric forces. So, in our previous lecture, uh, we we saw these three uh, model for water movement and uh, this is basically water flame thickness model if you remember then we talked about cylindrical uh, tube model or uh, the which basically shows different size differences uh, of different pores and finally we talked about this irregular angular pole model so if you remember we discussed that when there is a uh, you know uh, thick water film around a particular surface and uh, we you know it is it is it is the water is present in uh, um, you know uh, in saturated condition and ultimately the potential will be high and when we dry that particle or soil gradually the thickness of the water will go down and ultimately with the help you know with increasing uh, suction or metric forces the further the thickness of the water flame around the uh, around the particle will go down and uh, you know what so thus the water will always move from a particle uh, you know around which the thick water flame is produced to a particle uh, around which very thin water flame is present. So, based on the metric potential water will move from one place to another place. Then in the cylindrical tube model if you remember we talked about that when we are draining the initially saturated soil in the uh, you know intermediate phase obviously the phase the first uh, this macropores will empty out uh, and the micropores will be still remaining uh, filled with water and in the extreme dry condition both the pores will uh, empty uh, will be empty. So, and finally, you know uh, during the angular pore model we talked about some isolated pockets of water 
when we dry the soil and water will start drying from the middle part and there will be some amount of water at the corner of this angular pore because of varying amount of matrix suction and ultimately some amount of water will still remain in this uh, corners due to high amount of matrix suction. So, this happens when you dry a particular you know, way, you know initially wet saturated soil, but battery potential therefore accounts for an increasing proportion of the total soil water potential while the proportion attributable to the gravitational potential decreases. So, when we dry an initial uh, initially water saturated soil uh, with the application of uh, battery pressure or metric forces, the metric potential will be predominant and uh, we know as compared to the gravitational potential and uh, as a result you will see varying degrees of soil wetness. So, let us see these are different varying degrees of soil uh, wetness. As you can see the first condition is called saturated condition, second condition we call it field capacity, third condition we call it wilting coefficient and finally, the hygroscopic coefficient. Now, in the saturated condition uh, obviously, you see the total you know the water potential is 0 kilo Pascal and obviously, all the macro pores and micro pores are filled with water. So, if we are actually assuming that we are uh, we know the, the, the weight of the soil is 100 grams and 40 ml is water is present to fill up all the micro pores and macro pores and it is a saturated condition. Now, through the application of metric forces if we start you know draining this water or the the grab you know uh, when, when, when the draining will start from this place obviously you will see that uh, uh, the water will first drain out from these macro pores leaving only those micro pores uh, filled with water and as a result of that we call it a fill capacity. So, remember that in case of saturated soil and in case of fill, fill capacity the only difference is the water will move or water will go away from these macro pores and this water is called gravitational water. So, after removal of the gravitational water whatever water is remaining in the micro pores and this is called uh, you know fill capacity and this fill capacity the potential around the fill capacity is variable generally it is not very much you know we cannot definitely say, but it generally varies from minus 10 kilo Pascal to minus 30 kilo Pascal. And further, when we dry the soil from the fill capacity, you will see uh, the water is further, you know, further going down, and ultimately, a very thin layer of water will remain around the soil particles, and we will call this uh, water content as wilting coefficient or permanent wilting coefficient. And this permanent wilting coefficient generally, uh, you know, the the potential is around by the 15. 100 kilo Pascal and we call it permanent wilting point because at this point plant will start the plant wilt cannot be further recovered. So, this is a permanent in nature although the water will still be present into the soil plant cannot extract that water. So, whatever water is present in between the fill capacity and permanent wilting point is called available water or available water holding capacity of the soil. So, this is the amount of water that plant can efficiently use and whatever water is present below the wilting coefficient or permanent wilting coefficient plant cannot use. Now, if we further dry the soil below the permanent wilting coefficient, you will see that at the extreme uh, metric potential, there will be uh, further uh, you know only extreme metric potential uh, only the structural water or the water which has strongly adsorbed over the clay surface will remain and in this condition we will call it hygroscopic coefficient. Remember the hygroscopic coefficient occurs at a metric potential of uh, or the soil water potential of minus 3100 kilo Pascal. So, again you can see we are starting from a saturated soil when all the soil pores are filled and then we are applying the you know suction and as a result the gravitational water is draining out and further we reaches the ill cap fill capacity with a uh, potential of uh, minus 10 kilo Pascal to minus 30 kilo Pascal and then uh, we further 
dry the soil ultimately reaches to weld coefficient at minus 1500 kilopascal. We add the difference between the fill capacity and fill, uh, fill capacity and welding coefficient is called the available water uh, content of the soil which is uh, plant available water I would say and below the welding coefficient at hygroscopic coefficient only few amount of water is structurally attached to the soil uh, you know, the clay particles. So, these are different uh, uh, you know these are different stages of soil wetness. So, let us see uh, and discuss them individually. So, let us start with this water saturated condition. We call it maximum retentive capacity of the soil because all the pore spaces are filled both macro pores and micro pores are filled in this condition. Now, the battery potential in this case is close to 0 nearly the same as the that of free water because here we will as you we know most of the time the total water potential will be almost 0 because uh, all the soil pores are filled with water. Now, the volumetric water content is essentially the same as the total porosity because whatever water will be know present that will saturate all the micro pores and micro pores and you know the total porosity total pore is equal to macro pore and micro pores. So, all the macro and micro pores are uh, all the macro and micro pores are filled with the water. So, the volumetric water content is essentially the same as the total porosity. The soil will remain at maximum retentive capacity only so long as the continues to infiltrate. So, when the infiltration stops obviously, the gravitational water from the uh, from the from the macro pores will drain out uh, due to the influence of gravitational forces. And this uh, movement we know that uh, the gravitational water will percolate downward mainly under the influence of gravitational forces. We have already discussed what is uh, percolation in our last lecture. So, uh, I am not going into details of percolation. Uh, so, let us talk about the fill capacity. Now, in the fill capacity was the rain or irrigation has ceased the water in the larger soil pores you know will drain downwards uh, quite rapidly we talk we, we know we know in response to the hydraulic gradient and uh, mostly by the gravity this is the uh, this is we what we call gravitational water and after 1 to 3 days these rapid downward movement will become negligible and metric forces play a greater role in the movement of the uh, remaining water in the, in the movement of the remaining water and at this condition we will call that the soil is at its fill capacity. Now, remember that in this condition water has moved out from this macro pores and air has moved in to take you know air has moved in to take its place uh, the macro pores are uh, uh, the micro pores or capillary pores are still filled with water and can supply plants with needed water. So, at the uh, you know uh, the metric potential in the fill capacity may vary from minus 10 to minus 30 kilo Pascal. So, it is not definitive uh, it can vary between minus 10 to minus 30 kilo Pascal. So, if you see uh, what I have told in the last slide basically is depicting by this uh, this picture is basically depicting this. So, here is the uh, plot showing the relationship between days after the rainfall and water water content which is basically volumetric water content. So, if you see that you know when the day after the rainfall after 1 to 2 to 3 days after almost 2 to 3 days the volume you know the water content will uh, you know will go down. So, at the 0 day just after the rainfall obviously, that will contain the highest amount of water because all the pore spaces will be filled and further it will go down and ultimately you will see that uh, uh, you know at after 2 to 3 days it will reach the fill capacity. So, generally after a flash of rainfall it takes around 2 to 3 days uh, of draining to reach the fill capacity and uh, attaining a you know moisture content which is equivalent to the fill capacity. So, 
So again, what is gravitational water? Gravitational water is the portion of soil water that readily drains away between the state of maximum retaining capacity and fill capacity and most soil leaching occurs at gravitational water that drains from the larger pore before fill capacity is reached and remember that gravitational water therefore includes much of the water that transports chemical such as nutrient ions, pesticides and organic contaminants into the ground water and ultimately into streams and rivers. So, these gravitational water which drains readily from the macro pores after a flush of rainfall and reaches the fill capacity after 2 to 3 days, these gravitational water includes much of the water that transport chemicals for example, nutrient and pesticides and organic contaminants in the ground water ultimately into the streams and rivers. So, this is very important for planning the irrigation uh, you know for planning the application of different fertilizers uh, how you know you have to manage your fertilizer dose uh, by considering this uh, gravitational water uh, mediated movement Okay. So, what is the relationship between field capacity and plant? Why field capacity is important for plant growth? So, remember that at field capacity soil is a soil is holding the maximum amount of water useful to the plants. If you remember that the difference between field capacity and uh, permanent building point is called the available soil available water and uh, this is the amount of water that is available to the plant for their growth. So, another important thing I would like to mention that you remember when we discuss our soil consistency lecture, we discuss about several Atterberg limits and there were several Atterberg limits were uh, we talked about liquid limit, then we talked about plastic limit and then we talked about shrinkage limit and all these things. So, we also talked about uh, the differences between this liquid limit and uh, plastic limit, we call it plasticity index. Uh, so, it is the range uh, in which the soil behaves like plastic. So, it says that in case of fill capacity, it uh, basically is equal to the lower plastic limit. So, plastic limit is equal to fill capacity and above the fill capacity, the the, you know above the fill, fill you know uh, fill capacity the soil will behave like a plastic putty like material that easily turns into mud at water contents of the fill capacity and below the fill capacity that is the plastic limit the soil uh, you know uh, be, will behave like a crumbly semi solid and uh, it will help in tillage excavation. So, for tillage uh, you know I would say that uh, fill capacity approximates the upper limit of soil wetness. So, we should maintain the fill capacity and we should not apply water beyond the fill capacity for tillage because it will uh, you know resist the tillage operation because it will produce the mud. So, we always should tillage do the all the tillage operation below the fill capacity and at fill capacity sufficient pore space is filled with air to allow optimum aeration for most aerobic microbial activity and for the growth of the most plant. So, fill capacity is very much important as far as the plant growth is concerned. So, uh, let us see what is permanent wilting point. Now, permanent wilting point or PWP, you know that as the soil dries, the rate of plant water removal may fail to keep up with the water losses. So, then what is the, what is the way through which plant remove the water, you know the way is transpiration through stomata. So, at this time when the soil further grows uh, you know dry, the plants will close the stomatal opening because the soil water is not further available. So, when they will close the stomata, their growth will stop and as the growth stops it will start wilting. However, at minus 1500 kilo Pascal soil water potential or minus 15 bar soil water potential, uh, the soil wetness will reach the permanent wilting point because below which the soil the plant cannot regain its original growth and it will be permanently wilting. So, again the difference between the fill capacity and permanent wilting point is available water capacity. In this case, this is uh, the 
if if we call, if we consider the fill capacity uh, at the fill capacity there is 20 ml of water is present and at the permanent melting point only 10 ml of water is present so the difference between 20 ml to 10 ml so in this case available water content will be 10 ml for this particular soil so uh, so you 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 know the you know now you have the basic idea about uh, the implication of uh, uh, field capacity and permanent wilting point as far as the growth of the plant is concerned. So, let us go back and see as a summary this slide will show the difference between saturation field capacity and permanent wilting point. As you can see in case of saturation all the pores are filled with water, there is no air and there will be rapid drainage of water and as the soil further dries there will be no rapid drainage of free water because free water is already been um, you know already been drained out and leaving only the micro pores which are filled with water macro pores will be uh, you know will be emptied and occupied by air sometime. So, permanent wilting point is the uh, as a point where all the water most of the water is been removed and ultimately the plant is permanently wilted. So, this slide goes you know shows a very good uh, you know summary of whatever we have discussed so far. So, let us move forward and see uh, the formula of water available water holding capacity. So, it the difference between the fill capacity and the permanent wilting point is the available water content and uh, if we volumetrically uh, express it, it is theta a equal to theta f c minus theta p w p and uh, uh, theta uh, p w p. So, this is called the available water content. And uh, so, this picture will also give you a you know a good you know idea about these differences. So, if you see uh, at the time of saturation uh, there is a so, the below be, be beyond the saturation there will be flooded condition and uh, at saturation the uh, the bat the potential is 0 and below uh, at uh, from the saturation to field capacity obviously we are getting the gravitational water which is drainable and uh, uh, below the field capacity to permanent wilting point there is a plant available water and this permanent wilting point to hygroscopic coefficient remember that hygroscopic coefficient occurs at around minus 31000 uh, kilo Pascal uh, I am sorry uh, it occurs at around uh, 3100 uh, uh, kilo Pascal and uh, so and basically it will be further the water which is present below hygroscopic coefficient is unavailable water and at the uh, at the time of air drying and at the time of over drying there will be practically no volumetric water content. So, uh, I hope that uh, now it is uh, all the terms are clear to you and uh, these are the volumetric moisture content at uh, saturation, fill capacity and over dry condition and as well as permanent wilting coil. Now, hygroscopic coefficient, hygroscopic coefficient is uh, remember that although plant roots do not generally dry the soil beyond the permanent wilting per percentage, if the soil is exposed to the air, water will continue to be loose by evaporation. And water molecules in this case remain uh, are very tightly held mostly being absorbed by the colloidal soil surface and as I have told you the water potential will be minus 3100 kilo Pascal at this hygroscopic coefficient and the water is thought to be films uh, thought to be the films only 4 to 5 molecules thick and it is held so tightly that much of it is consistent is, is considered non liquid and can move only in the vapor phase and this is basically unavailable to the plant. So, this hygroscopic uh, water which is present at the hygroscopic coefficient is unavailable to the plant. Okay. So, this slide basically shows the relationship between the soil moisture potential in the kilo Pascal which is uh, presented in the log scale and uh, in the x axis and soil water content obviously, it is a volumetric soil water content. So, you of a particular type of soil. So, as you can see as we are increasing the 
as we are decreasing the soil water potential from high to low obviously uh, the soil will dry down and this is the uh, you know water you know the soil water curve and you can see at this point there will be maximum water retentive capacity and since it dry uh, after re after removing the gravitational water it will reach a fill capacity and the fill capacity is expressed in terms of the shaded area to indicate that there is no clear cut definition or clear cut uh, demarcation of the field capacity it varies from soil to soil, it varies from minus 10 to minus 30 kilo Pascal and after we you know remove further water from field capacity it will reach the uh, wilting coefficient and further to hygroscopic coefficient. So, the difference between the again uh, the difference between the uh, field capacity and wilting point is available water and this is the optimum water zone and remember that whatever water is present inside the, the you know for the for the uh, for the availability to the plant is basically most you know, most of it is capillary water and uh, hygroscopic water below you know hygroscopic water uh, occurs at around uh, minus 3100 kilo Pascal and below the permanent wilting point the water is called unavailable water. So, again available water is field capacity to permanent wilting point unavailable water is below permanent wilting point hygroscopic coefficient occurs minus 3100 kilo Pascal capillary water is mostly present between the hygroscopic coefficient to field capacity and the most optimum water uh, efficiency can be found within the field capacity at permanent filting point. So, what are the factors which affects the available water content? Uh, well, uh, this slide shows the relationship between the fineness or textural effect for the soil water content. Obviously, you can see that as we are going from sandy soil to sandy loam to loam and clay loam soil, obviously, their field capacity increases. The field capacity increases up to silt loam and then levels out. And uh, But in case of clay, obviously, their wilting point is quite high, uh, the wilting point is quite high. So, the plant available water is low in case of clay as compared to the silty loam soil. So, increase in available moisture storage from sands to loam and silt loam can show you this uh, increase in field capacity. However, in case of very fine texture soil like clay soil due to their increased wilting coefficient, the plant available water is also low as compared to silty loam soil. And obviously, uh, there is some uh, you know water content is very much important and uh, you know plants growing on sandy soils are more apt to suffer drought than that of those growing in a silt loam or the sand area or uh, the same area and the influences of soil texture and depth of plant available water holding capacity can be seen in this picture as you can see. Uh, the spatial distribution between this dry zone and the greenish zone and uh, when we excavated the when, when the scientists excavated uh, the soil below it you can see the uneven thickness of silt and sand. So, these are the boundary between this silt and sand obviously silt will have higher water holding capacity than the below sand and as a result of this uneven thickness of uh, silt content or silt metal, uh, there will be uneven distribution of water holding capacity or available water content because silt can hold more water than sand and as a result of that you will see some spatial variation in distribution of this dry zone and green zones. So, friends uh, we have covered a considerable portion of this uh, different soil water content and then uh, you know we discuss about their different terms and what are the implications for plant growth, what are the field capacity and permanent wilting point all these things. So, uh, let us wrap up here and in the next lecture we will start from here and we will start to uh, we will try to finish this lecture, uh, uh, we will try to finish this topic in the next lecture and then we will start a new topic uh, 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 you know that is soil aeration. Uh, in the next lecture. So, till then uh, thank you and uh, goodbye and we will uh, again meet in the next lecture of soil science technology. Thank you.